So it all started at 3.30 a.m. 14th of June. And Good morning, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about labour, birth and Sophia's first few days. Um, but first of all, we would like to apologise for not um, releasing a video on Wednesday because we're literally just at leftovers all week, pretty much. So definitely next Wednesday there will be a recipe video coming out. And it is something that Selby have made. My specialty. His specialty. So please look forward to that. So it all started 14th of June at 3.30 in the morning. I woke Selby up telling him that, you know, I'm in a lot of pain. And I think I started labour. But then he was like, ugh. Go back to bed. Yeah. Wait for a few hours. But obviously contractions don't really like don't let you sleep. They don't let you sleep. Come on now. They don't let you sleep. They let you sleep. Yeah, I was sleeping like a baby. <clears throat> but um My logic was before everyone starts having a go at me, we got told in the antenatal class they're not going to admit you straight away. So as soon as you start labour, you can't really do anything. You can't phone the hospital. Because they're going to tell you, well. Well, yeah, they're going to tell you, like, you have to wait two hours just, you know, to make sure that it's literally between three to five minutes apart. When my labour started, it was like, I don't know, every two hours. So I'd be able to fall asleep a little bit and then it would I would have contractions again. Um but then it carried on until about what would you say, like five in the morning? Yeah. When I woke Selby again, but obviously he still went back to sleep. Um so I tried to, you know, just do the breathing techniques and all that. But then it got to nine o'clock where I just couldn't handle it anymore. So I said, I literally like kicked Selby. I was like, get up! <laughs> and <laughs> that's when he got up. Um, we phoned the hospital and they said to wait for two hours, get in the bath or something. And within that two hours, my contractions started to be, you know, more frequent, a lot closer together. Um, I did had a bath, like I just sat in there. <laughs> like an apple. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what to do. I was just sitting in there in so much pain. No. I think it was like hour and a half. Um, we phoned the hospital again and they told us, you know, if I wasn't five centimeters dilated they'd send us back but we went anyway because it was so painful and i didn't know what to do how do you measure that i mean yeah you're gonna be five centimeters dilated oh, should i get my ruler out how the hell do i measure this <laughs> but um yeah so well we live fairly far away from the hospital anyway probably oh, we... like half an hour or so yeah about 30 minutes yeah, so, and there's a lot of lump, um, bumps on the yeah. road. Yes, there so, is. <laughs> that was awkward. Um, and then, obviously, while in the car, I was having contractions. And it was starting to get so painful. Um, and then we got to the hospital, got to the labour ward. They checked me. I was exactly five centimetres dilated. Calculated. <laughs> Because to be fair, I was um, two centimetres dilated two weeks prior. So, and then the week before, I was about three, almost four centimetres dilated. Um, so, yeah, that kind of like... But I guess being on the fifth centimetre is just 
made my, you know, um, I made the contractions even more pronounced. Because I thought I was only having like, you know, Braxton Hicks, because it didn't hurt that much anyway. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I was five centimeters dilated around, what time did we get there? 10? At half ten. At half yeah. ten, yeah. Half ten in the morning. And then they checked me about three hours later. I think if I remember correctly, I was six centimeters. And then they just kept checking me every three hours. Um, what they didn't tell us, just aside from that, was that once Razor was in the labour room, she wasn't allowed out of it. Like, there's toilets and stuff in there. But we had sort of not, we packed our bag, but what we hadn't got was food and drink. Because we just didn't think about it. We had some Lucas Aids, but we didn't have. Any food. any food I was starving so yeah but thankfully the dads or partners could go out so I went and found the canteen but it was a bit you know it's a bit harrowing leaving your giving birth wife to go and queue up to get fish and chips <laughs> I might have come back and the baby had been there yeah. I would not have been impressed but yeah but um yeah well I, I asked if we could walk around because I was getting so bored it's so boring just lying there walking around in the room in circles you know going in and out of the toilet just because but, um yeah so around about was it about 2 p.m we had the fish and chips yeah very good yeah it was really good for hospital food <laughs> yeah I don't know, I've watched these like labour vid videos where you're not allowed to eat anything while you're in labour. Um, but I guess I wasn't that much into the labour so they let us eat. And the, the whole room literally got filled up with fish smell. Yeah, I picked, I don't know why I picked fish and chips. It was the nicest looking thing they had. But, um, yeah, so we had our lunch. We didn't really have dinner because there's literally, I think, 6 p.m., was it, or something like that? That 6 was go time, wasn't it? Half 6. Mm, I think about half 5 they checked me again because I kept telling them that I'm going to push, <laughs> that the baby's coming out. But, um... She wasn't. She wasn't coming out. She wasn't coming out for a little while. <laughs> yeah. She, but it was getting more and more intense. Oh wait, I asked for a pethidin. Yeah, because it was getting really heavy on my back. So the pethidin kind of helped me go. Um. The pethidin. The little, little, little. The pethidin helped me ease up a bit. <clears throat> it's like a muscle relaxant, isn't it? I think so. Well, that's what it was like for me because my back literally stopped hurting as much. It stopped being quite heavy on my back so I was able to go in and out of sleep between contractions. Yeah, which was really funny because me and the midwife were sat in there and the midwife looked at me and was like, is, is Razor sleeping? And I was like, uh, let me check. Do oh, you yeah. have yeah. to? She was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't snoring. You were just breathing heavily and like with your eyes closed. And I was like, I said to the midwife, should I, should I wake her up? She was like, no, don't wake her up. Just let her sleep. She'll wake up soon, don't you worry. <laughs> and she was right. Uh, yeah, because I had gas and air as well. So I had gas and air the whole time. Well, not the whole time. Yeah, was, most of it. Most of, Yeah, most of it, but not as soon as I got in the oh, hospital. Oh, no, no. They um, had to hook it up and stuff. But um, <laughs> gas and air made me very high. <laughs> not going to lie. It affected me so hard. Um, but, yeah. 
Yeah, it's just like a mixture of <clears throat> oxygen and nitrous. It's like a small amount of nitrous, like that laughing gas stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And it just, you breathe it in, and you're having your contractions, and then you breathe it out. But yeah, it made Razel a little bit goofy. <laughs> but, um, well, Selby tried it too. <laughs> it's <clears throat> odd. <laughs> really odd. Yeah, that's the first time I've had gas and air. Um, yeah, so... I was fine with gas and air for a little bit, but then it got to about four or five when I started feeling a lot of pain, so I asked for pethidin. And then, yeah, I was still in and out of sleep between contractions. Um, I was literally, as soon as I could feel contractions, I wake up, have more gas and air, and then I'll go back to sleep straight away. I was exhausted. Yeah, I was exhausted already, but um, and then about, I think it was about 6.30, it was go time. Yeah. Yeah, so... That's when it all, all the action started. Six o'clock, I was nine, nine centimetres. Um, they told me to not push it, obviously. And then half an hour later, they checked again, and I was 10 centimetres dilated. Um, so, it was go time, half six, but Sophia decided to wait a bit longer while I was pushing, so it got to about, I'd say about eight, where they started getting ready, getting ready to go to the theatre to, you know, snip, yeah, get a little snip, just to help out. But, as they were getting everything sorted, they took quite a while. 40 minutes. <laughs> they took, the doctor, so yeah, I was pushing f un from 6.30 till 8. And the doctor, like, took forever to get back because there's so many people in the ward wow. that's having cesareans. Yes, yeah. they had, like, three of the people we're in with were, and they had to have the doctor attend. <laughs> Yeah, so the doctor was in and out while I was pushing, um, and then about half eight, um, no, it wasn't, yeah, it was about, yeah, about half eight, it was about half eight, the doctor came back, and then seven minutes later, well, <laughs> two of it at half eight, I started ask like, I asked if I could have, um, an epidural. An epidural. <laughs> like, no, Mrs. Justice, the, the baby's literally here. Yeah. The head's out. <laughs> yeah, so they asked me if I could, to feel the head, because she had quite a bit of hair. And I did, and it felt quite sticky and yucky. Yeah, it's not something you really want to see either. Guys, no, just, yeah. They they asked Selby if he wanted to as well. <laughs> no. He didn't, he, he didn't go anywhere near down there. I value my love life too much to see the carnage of that. <laughs> it's not something I ever want to see. I've seen enough sheep giving birth. But, um, yeah, so... 8.37 <laughs> is when Sophia came out. And, not gonna lie, once the head was out, it felt really weird because then the body just goes <laughs> out <laughs> it felt so weird it's like she i don't know it's like she didn't have bones i know her bones weren't you know they're soft aren't they yeah bones. they were like very very soft like a freaking noodle a bunch of noodles coming out <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> yeah so Noodle That's a... <laughs> it's weird because she looked like an alien. <laughs> but a picture of her. Yeah, we'll be putting like pictures and videos of what we've managed to take. Because we did get an option to, you know, take pictures and videos. But at the time we weren't really thinking about... Preservation we... and YouTube stuff. We were just yeah. like... Oh. But, um... Well, have some to pictures. be fair, I did, I wanted to record my birth, but yeah, it was quite sad, but for the next one, definitely recorded it. Anyway. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> anyway, 
So the doctor, after the birth, the doctor had to go again for another cesarean emergency. Um, so I was just lying there with my legs up and Sophia on me for about two hours. Yeah, it wasn't very dignified. Was no, it two hours? It was about two hours. Yeah, around that sort yeah, of time. Because, yeah, because it, she came out at 8.37, we left about... Um, I think midnight. We left the labour room into the labour ward. No, labour ward? Into the... It's like a general ward for a, after you've given birth, isn't it? Just with yeah. ladies and their babies. It's like at midnight. Um, so yeah, I was sitting there. I was starting to start... I was starting to feel pain down there. So they called the doctor back to because I tore in three different places and one of them was a second degree tearing so it's not that bad but if I'd have if they'd have waited longer could've I been. it could have been it could have gotten worse like I could have gotten an infection or something but luckily the doctor came running in stitched me up they put um, anesthetic on my leg down there but to be fair it still hurt the pain of the tugging of the string it's was just, so painful it's just weird weird sensation they're like oh you can still use the gas in there mrs justice yeah <laughs> it's great yeah. um so yeah i was you know using the gas in air while she was sewing me up it was weird because she was rushing it she was literally just Pook, 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 which is fine because it made it a lot faster and I guess less painful. It's just mm. the tugging felt awkward. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so after that, I managed to clean up, you know, the whole mess. Selby saw it all because <laughs> he had to walk around the bed. <laughs> but I, I told him to have a look down there and see how bad it is. It was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you expect? It's just pushed a human being out of your body. Not even ever going to be the prettiest sight, is it? But, yeah, it, but yeah. going too graphic, it, it looked like uh, someone had been fighting. <laughs> it looked sore as hell, is what I would say. <laughs> and it probably felt sore as hell. I don't know, I was pretty numb. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. But, um, yeah, so, um, after she sewn me up, she dashed off for another cesarean emergency. Like Batman. I was literally, like, just running around everywhere. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, um, after that, we got myself, well, Selby had Sophia, Mm. So he was doing like skin to skin, um, and then a student nurse came in and asked if Salvi would like to dress. No, Sophia. wasn't the, the student one that asked that? I know it was. Yeah, yeah it was. But pro nurse. tip for you fellas out there, when your partner is going into labour, don't wear something like this. Wear something with buttons, because then you can just undo it. It's nice to have baby on your skin as well. Yeah, it just creates that bond, and I feel like they've created too much bond because now Sophia gets so excited whenever she sees Selby. She's probably had enough of me, to be fair. <laughs> I am here twenty four seven. But anyway, um, yeah. So got out of the bed, went into the bathroom to freshen up and you know wash out all the nastiness that came afterwards every imaginable bodily fluid when yeah. you give birth so the nurse told Selby if he would like to dress Sophia up while I'm having a shower and he said yeah obviously because you know it's, it's his first time dressing up a newborn oh my god <clears throat> that was a trip <laughs> <clears throat> it was just like I didn't feel awkward doing it. I've never dressed a child baby before ever, put a nappy on a baby ever, but like when it's your 
first child and they're so small like she would fit in my hand she was six pounds two ounces could hold her in my hand <clears throat> she was long but she was really light and i just she just felt so delicate and the, yeah. the midwife was like come on hurry you got to do it a bit quicker than this yeah because obviously the baby's getting cold so and i'm carefully putting her arm through making sure i don't pull it too tight but... so, to be fair the midwife was lovely she wasn't like rushing me but she was like going come on she's gonna be cold yeah so yeah that's the labor and the bear it wasn't too bad i guess well razor walked to the uh like the general ward as well the, the mummy ward. yeah the nurse asked me if i wanted a wheelchair and or to walk and push you know the cot bed that the baby's in and i was like i feel fine so i'll walk and then the nurse was like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> Because I take it that not many um, mums walk to the ward because you have to get into the lift um, to get there. Yeah. Which is fine. I just walked. It wasn't too far. No. It, it did start to get sore near the end, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably best to take the wheelchair if you're sewn up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... Oh, Selby did cut the umbilical cord, and that was so weird. Yeah, uh, it's the weirdest thing to cut. <laughs> I didn't really want to cut it, to be honest with you. Not not for any negative reason, but just I don't know. It just it's not. I'm glad I did. Honestly, I'm glad Razor like more well, you know said for me to do it. But if it, if they just said to Mr. Chester, would you like to cut it? And Razor hadn't said, yeah, I'll cut it. I probably would have gone. Mm-hmm. And then I would have beaten him up. Because obviously he knew that I wanted him to cut it. Okay. But, um, it's just a weird feeling of cutting it. It's like, how did it feel like? Did it feel like rubber? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Snip. But, yeah, so that was the labour and the birth. And now for the first few days. We had to stay in the hospital for four days. No reason at all. None at all. But, well, well, their reasoning was because she was smaller than they thought at the start. She was smaller, so they wanted to monitor her. Yeah, that was that, but the reason... No, 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 no. That comes after. Oh, okay. She is smaller than they thought because she was a week, literally a week late. Um... But okay. what can you, what can you really say? Because I'm a small girl, I'm not even five foot, so obviously my baby's not gonna be that tall or that big. But um, yeah, so that was supposed to be a one night kind of yeah. um, checking up on her and stuff. But then she, her temperature is apparently was apparently not up to their standards she was too cold she was too cold 36.6 her temperature was so we had to stay there for another night for another 24 hour check with their hot bed yeah it's like a plate that they put them on that keeps them warm it's like a plate it's like a bed a heated up bed yeah yeah right (laughs) so they were cooking her some more <laughs> like a potato. <laughs> but um yeah, so we had to get that done. But then that bed broke in the middle of the night. So she got really cold. Her temperature went so far down um in the morning when they checked her because nobody knew I don't know how it works. But nobody decided to check it. Yeah, nobody checked the bed and made sure that was working until one of them did. Well, until we complained that the the bed was making a lot of noise. Yeah. And it kept saying error. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it took them a long time to get another bed sorted. Um, so 
we decided to put on layers of clothes on her and for some reason somehow i don't know what the nurse did but the bed started working in the middle of the night um yeah well, like a different nurse come didn't she yeah and she was, was a... like what's going with this and beep, 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 beep. and then turned it on yeah so sophia all wrapped up in so many layers and so many blankets her temperature went way up high I was like going worrying high I think it was about I think it went up to like 38, 39 no, I don't think it went that high did it? it did okay. it went really high you weren't there oh okay I was sleeping at this point he, he had to keep well he, there was only one armchair not even a comfortable armchair the worst armchair ever honestly I tried to sleep in it the first night and it was like no I just couldn't and Rose was like well you have to go home so I went back at about so one Selby eight. goes ho went home about midnight and then comes back about s 7 8 in the morning um, as early as I could really I think the first night I left at about 1am and I got back at about 6.30 yeah, because Sophia was, well, Sophia was born on a Friday, and then, obviously, he had the weekend off, um, and then, he, yeah, so, the third night, her temperature went way up, but it went back down straight away, um, and then, the fourth day, they told us that she could possibly have jaundice because we didn't i didn't hear anything from them all night nothing at all and all morning still nothing they stopped checking her temperature because her temperature went fine um it was so frustrating for new parents honestly i i kind of like i was crying every night because I didn't know what was happening, why was my daughter's temperature keep going up and down and they keep checking my pulse. Obviously my anxiety went, you know, out the door, literally. So they were like, Mrs Justice, calm down. And I'm like, how can I calm down? I'm a first time mum, I don't know what's happening. My daughter's temperature is going up and down, freaking monitor is breaking on us. Yeah, that was the worst bit. <laughs> We've got all that waiting because of the stupid temperature cot not working. So when we when we got told that, we were like, are you serious? Yeah, and then, so bear in mind, at the start, her temperature was 36.6. .6. They sent us home, her temperature was 36.6. .6. So where was the difference? What was the freaking difference? Mm -hmm. I was so frustrated. I was so mad. Yeah. I was crying a lot. Um, and then on the last day, they, s I told the, n the nurse, the midwives, that why are we still here? What am I still waiting for? We've not heard anything during the night, during the day. Because this was about midday where the shifts have swapped. And then the the midwife come back saying, well, she was apologising because for not being updated, and apparently that Sophia could have jaundice, and she did not look like it. I know what jaundice looked like, and she did not look like she had it at all, no trace of it. So they went and you know took her blood and stuff. Um, that was horrible. That was really horrible. Not nice. They took her blood, come back a couple hours later saying, no, there's no, there's no trace at all. And I was like, I could have told you that. Because she doesn't look like it. Um, so yeah, so we went home on the fourth day, um, in the evening, mm. just before dinner. I was exhausted, Selby was exhausted, 
Um, hospitals drain you. Doesn't matter how much you sleep in a hospital, it drains you. It didn't help that the lady in front of us, she's had um, you know, she's had a bit of problems, and her partner oh. was horrible. He was literally the most aggravating man I've ever ever seen. Because he was all night, every night since, I think the lady came the night after I did. So every night since then, he would argue with her. Bear in mind, she literally just gave birth. He would, uh, they would argue every night, every day. And then it got to the point where the guy had enough and argued with the nurse and the doctor saying, why can't I take my child home and leave my partner here? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> this, was, this was a breastfed baby, by the way, that he was suggesting that to. And she was struggling on breastfeeding because she had a an epidural and a, you know... She, she had quite a traumatic birth, and then yeah. this guy was like... Oof. I don't know what his problem was, but he got told, like, you need to calm down. Or you're going to get banned from coming in there. <laughs> yeah. So. They never did ban him, though, unfortunately. No, they he they paid for her to get moved. Yeah, to like a different room. Because you can pay for like a private no, no, room. No, 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 they didn't get they didn't pay. They moved her to the one on the other end of the room oh. by the window oh, where yeah, there's yeah. more. Because that end have a more comfy like armchair it's got a recliner um i didn't get a recliner no i should have kicked off <laughs> why can't i take my daughter home <laughs> we had a lady next to me um she's been there for a a lot longer than me from what i've heard and she literally she's got another child she's got an older child um so I guess she can kind of like drown out the the crying but he was not her baby was not crying softly like it was full on crying for food but she was just snoring away and um like for a couple hours later the nurse had to wake her up to feed her child which I find quite bad because you shouldn't really block out a child's cry in my opinion so yeah that went on like every single night that we were there <clears throat> and every time their, her family came over her firstborn would literally just run around um, everywhere they kept getting told to make sure that she would stop running because, you know, you're in a hospital. Um, and they weren't, like, they don't talk um, what they call indoor voice. <laughs> they were loud, like, really, really loud. They would shout, they would laugh so loud, like, there's no one else in the room with them. Um, so you can't really relax. <laughs> no. There was no relaxing in that ward, but then um, while we were in the hospital, while we were being checked, um, we found out that Sophia had a heart murmur, so they kept an eye on that, but it wasn't that bad yeah, it was from faint. the start. It was very faint. Um, so the pediatrician kept checking on her. So the day after we got sent home, we had to go back to the hospital to check on her heart murmur and it was gone. Yeah, it's quite common. One in three newborns has it. Yeah, so it wasn't that bad. That's and another worry to add to the pile of worries that we got when we were in that ward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is Sophia's labour, birth and first few days of being alive. <laughs> um, so we hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to press that like button, subscribe 
and maybe write down a little comment. Um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.